Hello everyone, I'm Luke, and in today's video I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I designed and developed my own crafting system. But before we get into the video, let me give you a short channel update. As you might have noticed, I've been gone for a short while due to some crazy events happening in my life. But while I didn't have time to create new videos, I did have time to work on my game. So this is how the game looked during the last video. And this is how it looks now. Anyway, let's get back to the main topic of the video, the crafting system. To be honest with you, the crafting system was way easier to make than I expected. All you need to do is think a little bit about its design before you get into it. So let me show you my design, to make your job easier. First I created a few structures, which make it way easier to manage classes and variables later on. The first structure is the crafting requirement. All it needs is the item of the ingredient and the required amount. So for example, if the item requires 8 pieces of wood to craft, you should set the wood class as the item and 8 as the amount. The next class is the crafting recipe. First we have the class for the item that's going to be crafted. Then we have an array of the crafting requirement structures that we created earlier on. Then there's the category. It's a variable that tells us which stations we can use to craft the item, but more on that later. And the last variable is the unlocked boolean variable, which basically tells us whether the player unlocked the recipe or not. And with those two structures out of the way, half of the design is done. Now all we need to do is create a variable in the player class that tells us a list of available recipes. Since it's attached to the player's character, we can access it and modify it easily anytime we want. And the last thing I created was the crafting component. Since it's an actor component, I can attach it to any class and object I want, and that way I can create multiple types of crafting stations without any unnecessary code duplication. So, how does the crafting component work? The most important part of the component is the variable, which stores all the recipes that are available at this station. So, when we first create the actor or load it into the level, we clear the variable to make sure there isn't any duplication. Then we populate the array, by simply going through all the available recipes for the player, and then adding only the ones which have the same category as our crafting station. In the current version of my crafting system, each recipe can only have one station category, but if you want your recipes to be available at multiple types of stations, you can easily replace the category with an array. Then the crafting component has two functions. The first function is very simple. It simply checks if the station available recipe is available to the player. As you might have noticed in the previous step, the station available recipes variable should never have any recipes that aren't available to the player. However, I decided to create this function to make doubly sure that this is true. I use this function only to populate the user interface part, it's not used anywhere else. The next function is a little bit more complex, and it's the craft item function. As the input it receives the class and the amount of the item we want to craft. Then we once again make sure that the recipe is available, before breaking it into parts. Then the function fires off a loop, and the number of its iterations is equal to the number of items we want to craft. First we take all of the crafting requirements and loop over them to check if the player has the required amount. If even a single requirement is not met, then the function returns a local boolean, which makes it impossible to craft the item later on. Once we make sure that all the requirements are met, we proceed to the loop, which interacts with our inventory component. It simply removes the crafting ingredients from the player's inventory and adds the crafting output. As you can see, I implemented a little system, which basically allows the player to craft an additional item by chance. The extra item chance can be affected by the station type or maybe the player's active effects. 
You can add more features like that into your crafting system, since they are pretty easy to develop and integrate into the system. The last feature of my system is that if the player is located in the main village, then they can craft the items without any regard for the space available in their inventory. And if they ever go over the spot limit of their inventory, the items are simply sent to household storage. The last part is pretty much a formality, and it's creating a user interface that allows you to interact with both the inventory system and the crafting system. So, let me show you the system in practice. As you can see, I have 15 pieces of wood in my inventory. When I interact with the crafting station, I have three available recipes. One of them is the plant bed, which requires 4 pieces of wood. The second one is a tree bed, which requires 10 pieces of wood. And the third one is the crafting station itself, which requires 8 pieces of wood and 2 pieces of metal. As you can also see, my system automatically changes the outline color based on whether or not the player can actually craft the item. And if we change the amount, you can see that the system will automatically adjust the number of required materials and whether or not we have enough to craft the item. And all you need to do to craft the item is to simply click on the button. We still have some more wood, so we can also craft a single plant bed. I'll talk a little bit more about the building system in the next video, so for now let's just focus on the crafting. And as you can see, if I go over the amount of items I can create, I can click the button all I want, it still won't add the item to my inventory, but it also won't take the ingredients. And that's pretty much it. As you can see the crafting system is fairly simple to create, as long as you design it ahead of time. And that's all for today. See ya!